How are solar farms actually built? And what can you expect during the construction process? On average, the construction process for a solar farm typically takes only three to nine months, depending on the location, site conditions, and accessibility. For example, if you have a one to two megawatt site, that would typically fall within a three to four month time frame, whereas larger sites ranging from three to five megawatts can take up to nine months. Most of the work on the site will happen during this time and includes installing foundations, as well as connection materials such as racking, solar panels, and electrical equipment. A small crew may return intermittently to the site to complete necessary construction such as electrical equipment testing, site performance, or outstanding site vegetation and maintenance. If agrivoltaics are a part of the site's plan, then the solar facility will be built to allow for more farming or grazing underneath these panels. Learn more about agrivoltaics in these videos. Once construction is finished, the solar farm can begin operating in what we call its steady state. But what are the specific construction activities that will take place? And how much space will it take up on your land? What kind of noise levels should you expect? Depending on the phase of the project, four to 16 people will be typically working on site during construction. As for noise, the sound from various types of machinery will be noticeable. One main noise source is the PD-10 pile driver, which pounds the steel posts supporting the solar panels into the ground, creating a repetitive thumping noise. However, the PD-10 pile driver is only used during installation of the foundations, and this is only used for about a month, so this noise will be temporary. Other equipment and noise includes tractor trailers, semi-trucks, forklifts, flatbed trucks, cranes, and cement mixers, all necessary for getting the project up and running. Again, this noise is temporary. Along with installing solar panels and connecting poles, a designated area called the equipment pad will be built within the leased land to house the electrical equipment for the solar farm. Depending on the existing setup, new electrical infrastructure may also be added to connect the solar array to the larger grid. Once operational, solar developers will occasionally do deliveries and vegetation management but major traffic is focused on the first half of project construction timeline, keeping activity minimal on your land. Now that you know how long the process takes, let's say you're interested in leasing your land for solar. Before construction officially begins, the first step is a pre-construction site meeting. This meeting includes the landowner, the utility company, and the project developers to confirm key project details, such as lease boundaries, access points, and specific locations for all site components. It ensures everyone is on the same page and that we account for each detail before mobilization. Step two is mobilization. Mobilization marks the actual start of construction once the initial equipment arrives on the site, the field crew will build an access road. This road is clear and stable, and it's a pathway for equipment and workers to access the construction area, laying the groundwork for each of the following phases. Now, step three, surveying and fencing. Surveying involves a small crew of one to three people who establish markers around the lease boundaries, access points, and the layout of the solar site. Next, the construction team installs fencing to secure the perimeter of the solar array. The posts for this fence are driven into the ground and an agricultural style fence with a gate is installed, ensuring secure access to the site for authorized personnel. Then, grading machines are used to clear vegetation and level some pieces of land. This prepares the land for site design which focuses primarily on creating a smooth and even road while also ensuring that rainwater flows appropriately across the site, reducing any potential runoff issues. Step four is when you'll start seeing fast progress on your land with pile driving and racking. Pile driving involves driving steel posts called piles deep into the ground to provide the structural foundation for the solar panels. Once the piles are in place, the racking equipment can be installed. Racking involves connecting the piles to the solar panels. Depending on the system being installed, this may include tracking technology that allows the panel to tilt to follow the sun throughout the day, optimizing energy output. This step accounts for about a third of the overall construction process. Step five is panel installation, where the solar modules or panels are attached. Each module is carefully clamped onto the racking system, securing it in position. We're getting to the last few steps now. Step six is to install the electrical equipment. Electrical equipment is brought to the site after being purchased and manufactured off-site. This equipment is set onto concrete pads, or in some cases, mounted on utility poles. Once the concrete is poured and cured, the equipment is securely placed on top to ensure stability. Underground electrical lines are often completed prior to this. Step seven is interconnection. Interconnection is a crucial step in connecting the solar farm to utilities electrical grid. This process includes rigorous testing to verify that each component of the solar array meets utility requirements and can handle the electricity output. 
finally, step eight is testing. This phase includes final inspections and tests to verify that all systems function as intended, separate from the utility testing. After the main tests are finished, the crew will complete any remaining items on the punch list, which are minor adjustments that ensure the site is ready for long-term operation. This can include label installation, adjustments to fence height, limited grading, seeding, and vegetation management to stabilize the land around the solar array. If you remember this term from earlier, the farm is now in a steady state and ready to begin operating. More important than any individual construction step is who you're working with. It's essential to work with a trusted solar provider with an agreement with the local utility to connect the solar farm to the grid smoothly and effectively. This is critical to ensure the energy generated on your land can be distributed and that the project meets all utility requirements. Your solar provider should also have a structured plan to remove the solar array and return the land to its original condition when the solar arrays are at the end of their life. This ensures that your property's long-term value is protected. At Pivot Energy, our team is here to answer any questions you may have about the construction process, the leasing terms, or any other details. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more advice on solar farm construction. See you next time.